very, very soon. And now let's come to today's session. And today's session is all about sustainability and compliance excellence post-COVID business scalability. And it is indeed my pleasure to introduce our uh, presenter for today. I would now like to introduce uh, Dr. Karthik. Now, let me just quickly read about Dr. Karthik. Dr. Karthik has a very, very elaborate profile and it is indeed my pleasure to do that. So uh, Dr. Karthik ND is a management consultant in Industry 4.0, organizational and people transformation with a special focus on business excellence, sustainability and quality, operational excellence, Lean Six Sigma, quality assurance, TQM, total quality management, social and environmental compliance, profitability, people development, and culture change to build world-class organizations. With over 20 plus years of experience in the apparel industry across tables, Dr. Karthik ND has his management consulting firm, Mindworks International, covering key clientele across Bangladesh and India. Prior to that, he was country managing director for Bangladesh and India for one of the leading testing inspection auditing certification body for more than a decade. Dr. Karthik also specializes in textile, analytical, chemical, RSL, uh, ZDHC, regulatory testing requirements for most global markets, footwear, leather and synthetic, PPE, wastewater, et cetera, product inspections, facility audits for social, environmental safety, people, and regulatory aspects. He has successfully handled various uh, and productivity improvement projects in Bangladesh and India, resulting in reduced lead times, improved right first time, percentage and improved quality, cost optimization, and profitability improvements, along with enhanced product value, right? An avid reader, triathlete, and a humble being to develop, support, and inspire people. He works with towards seeing the big picture of getting fit for future, delivering strategic value propositions with innovative and disruptive thought leadership. And today it is indeed our pleasure that we get to hear more from Dr. Karthik about his experience, his accumulated experience for over the years on what the industry has in store and what can be developed out of that. Dr. Karthik, it is indeed our pleasure to have you on board with us. And I welcome you to talk and uh, to learn more from your experience. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Gagan, and thanks to Sotai teams, Sotex and Mr. Sonal Dan uh, specifically. Uh, for this wonderful initiative and uh, every week, even I, I connect uh, most of the sessions uh, wherever, which part of the world I am and uh, uh, it's a great learning opportunity and it's a pleasure to connect with uh, the industry as a, as a whole and to share and learn. Actually, I would say this is more of a uh, learning session rather than a knowledge sharing. Yeah, this is a knowledge session and where everybody learns, including me. Yes. So thanks a lot and thanks for the wonderful uh, uh, introduction as well and uh, yeah let's let's go into the session absolutely please share i i believe you have a presentation and we are looking forward course, to that and then uh, i would also request all the audience that uh, uh, any questions you have or you come across uh, during the presentation there are q and there is a q and a box at the bottom of the uh, of your screen you can post your questions in the q and a box or post it on the chat however you want to and we will be taking these questions post the presentation of Dr. Karthik. So over to you, Dr. Karthik, for the presentation. Of course. Thanks a lot. And yes, definitely uh, we'll go into the session where I'm uh, sharing the screen. And uh, I would like to have this more of an interactive, yes, definitely as much as possible. As I said, this is uh, a knowledge sharing session. And uh, the topic, today's topic, which we are going to discuss on sustainability and compliance excellence and post uh, COVID business scalability. Here, my uh, humble submission is I would like to show uh, a kind of over, overall framework and uh, uh, yeah, highlights or uh, what to say, a high level overview. And then going into the very nitty gritties of this because those will uh, specifically address and it will be a uh, yeah, kind of uh, each and every topic when we talk about both the terminologies, sustainability and compliance. Till today, in my knowledge, in my little whatever uh, I'm aware of uh, working in this industry for all this, no one is able to define specifically what is sustainability or what is compliance. 
right this is a huge 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 topic so that is exactly the reason and again uh, if you look at the most important part which is the second part of the topic which is post covid business scalability covid has taught us so many things right and first of all before formally getting into the session my sincere prayers and the condolences for whoever has uh, lost their lives or the loved ones and the impact which has created in our day to day life business financials and everything so a big respect to everyone who has gone through this and we we'll still we are recovering still we are getting new terminologies and uh, still current scenario is a uh, little bit promising and uh, gives us the confidence to talk about post covid as a terminology still we are at the end of covid not still fully over but uh, what is important what is the most important lesson we learned in in all these uh, past two years of uh, our life industry and business and uh, in life as a whole if you look at this the only thing we have is this planet and the only thing we abused is this planet isn't it i would like to also like to have some kind of chat responses uh, if if you agree disagree if you have any uh, new points to share once in a while uh, so what what we did in these all these years we we completely abused mother earth we failed to see the big picture we uh, utilized resources consumed resources in whatever ways possible only looking at profits and uh, uh, money uh, financials and all those kind of things number game has become uh, a major scenario and that is exactly the reason i didn't want to go into the numbers in today's session and i would like to keep this as an awareness as well as a framework what are all available for us to still gear up to to move forward so giving this agenda i would like to connect the big picture of when we talk about compliance or sustainability the co- most common uh, responses we always get from manufacturers who are actually going through the most toughest time in in business point of view why buyers are keep on you know, they keep on our compliance compliance certification uh, we have to go through a uh, number of audits which is creating audit fatigue financial fatigues and uh, are the buyers willing to pay when they are more uh, how this compliance actually helps us uh, for us to be uh, to be sustainable in the business point of view and all those kind of things this i have been in one of the leading uh, tac uh, industry and as a, as a uh, i have faced all these questions in the past uh, more than a decade and when we look at this there are solutions definitely uh, many many tac providers that is testing inspection auditing uh, service providers have come up with solutions which are also providing another checklist or which is more comprehensive and all those kind of things what is important for us is how we go beyond those checklists how we uh, surpass those minimum requirements and be proactive and be uh, responsible for uh, environment mother earth uh, our future as a whole and how we are going to uh, scale it up scale the business not only scale business in terms of money scale business in terms of life in terms of society and uh, I- i believe most of you might have heard the terminology industry 4.0 which talks about automation which talks about uh, talks about big data which talks about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning so when we talk about these high end tools uh, i was impressed to share one particular learning where our the one of the most uh, reputed countries uh, one of the country which is uh, uh, known for quality yeah you would have guessed it right japan japan's former prime minister announced something which is one step ahead called as society 5.0 which means whatever we are going to do whatever in terms of use of technology deployment of uh, automation and all those kind of things if you are if it is not going to benefit people if it is not going to benefit society if it is not going to benefit the planet it's of no use so whatever whatever businesses whatever processes we are following uh, should definitely uh, benefit the planet and that is exactly the reason i would like to connect 
to these SDGs, which is Sustainable Development Goals. When we talk about the growth and development, definitely all needs to be sustainable. And it is a very inclusive kind of approach, which uh, will help us to be more uh, sustainable in terms of life, business, financials, and with all people involved and benefited. So most of you might have seen, but still for the sake of uh, a quick review, you can see these 17 sustainable goals, like in terms of uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, uh, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, partnership for the goals. If you look at this, and if uh, we look at the key coverage of all the tools which we are currently using for compliance and sustainability measures are all related to this. And the first and foremost thing for manufacturers who are raising those questions, why brands are pushing us to be more compliant? Why brands are pushing us to be more sustainable? If not for the sake of the manufacturer's own benefit, this is for a bigger picture of the planet, the bigger picture of the environment, and most of the global brands sourcing from uh, any region, and especially South Asia, which, uh, which is my, my favorite is, uh, geography, I come from India, I spent a good amount of time in Bangladesh, uh, where apparel production, textile and apparel production is uh, huge and it's growing year on year. And, uh, and all of you would know Bangladesh is the second largest exporter of uh, apparel in uh, the world, next only to China. So with uh, all, all these, these poverty, for example, one of the key elements which we are talking about in a social compliance audit is minimum wages, right? So that minimum wages is definitely linked to uh, the first goal of no poverty and zero hunger, good health and well-being, right? And so you can, we can relate each and every tool which is in that, uh, say, checklist uh, or uh, audit form, whatever we are talking about, all are related to sustainable development goals. And unless otherwise the world is sustainable, we, we, we as an individual won't be sustainable, the business won't be sustainable. So I would like all of us to look at that big picture and support each and every organization. There could be entrepreneurs, there could be employees, there can be different stakeholders, could be from brands, manufacturers, uh, or, or including uh, third party or PACA companies. So all I would like to support each and every aspect. How do we address these goals in our day-to-day -day life, right? So including responsible consumption, the latest one being uh, the sustainable fabrics or recycled material, talking about the responsible consumption, reuse, reduce, recycle, and all those kind of stuff. So this is where I would like to address this uh, high-level picture and then go into the impact on ecosystem which is creating in terms of water, energy, and food. In each and every aspect, be it water security and management, textile industry, next only to agriculture industry, is the highest consumption of water in each and every process. Again, I am not going to the numbers here, which are quite alarming, uh, how much of water is being produced for uh, every per kg of uh, fabric or a garment, especially if you're talking about denims. So how we can reduce water consumption in our manufacturing process, how we are able to reduce the uh, uh, energy consumption. Uh, obviously, food is, a, is a, uh, not into the industry as such. Textiles are supply chain, but it, it also, when we are depleting the resources of water and energy for our material production in terms of textiles, definitely this impacts uh, food production as well, right? The, the energy security, the governance and investments. So all these aspects clearly says we need to look into a holistic scenario. And that is where I would definitely uh, highlight the growing importance and awareness for everyone, especially for the brands. Most of the brands, they have started focusing on these five key elements or five pillars, we can say, the ethical sourcing. There are questions of, are the brands uh, ethical fully? Yes, definitely they are ethical, 
because the unless service there is a pressure uh, unless there is a framework that brands are putting in place the manufacturers again trying to cut costs or uh, trying to be sustainable in their own way only for their business there could be issues at the same time yes there could be areas of improvement in all other stakeholders as well so how we start with is that value which is on 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 top that we want to be ethical in our sourcing so that is there and at the same time when it comes to how can we be ethical uh, it's not only about the cost or the payments where where we talk about the processes being ethical where we are not uh, abusing the uh, resources and we talk about recycling materials so when we talk about recycled materials you now the growing importance i am in this industry in this business currently where the demand for recycled cotton recycled polyester recycled waste can getting converted into uh, new materials or we call it as upcycling so all these are definitely uh, for being focused and at the same time are we not only abusing the uh, resources in terms of water and energy and land not only that is when we are abusing land which is the the agriculture or uh, uh, those agricultural land getting converted into industrial uh, land and uh, factories are being made i am seeing in bangladesh one way it gives happiness that industry is growing but it also shows that there are uh, impacts created on the environment and ecosystem which directly or indirectly impacts animals so that is where we call it as uh, there are cruelty free focus has come where uh, you might have seen some of the certifications we talk about we are not farming animals in certain areas but now the even in the manufacturing of products uh, be textiles uh, in uh, and the best example there are some uh, chemicals or uh, auxiliaries being used for which animal materials are being uh, being uh, consumed so those kind of uh, chemicals are also being uh, avoided so, so that there is no impact on animals as well and those are now those brands focusing on this are now expecting certifications like vegan certifications so we we might have heard about vegan certification or vegan food uh food be, food industry but it is also gaining importance in uh, in textile and apparel industry and on the other hand how the consumers can contribute how they can contribute is first of all yes buy less when we say buy less will it not impact the business yes it might impact business but at the same time it will help the environment uh, help the ecosystem and how still have still affordable fashion is by using recycling of the products we call it as again in one way second hand and it's not just second hand it will it can uh, lead into multiple hands it's not going to be only one time recycling materials uh, yeah, on the environment but the longevity the number of uh, uh, the, the amount of time which will be on the land it's it's not uh, dumped but the usability of these synthetic materials uh, recyclability of these synthetic materials including polyester and so it's much more higher compared to cotton and definitely that helps in certain so this awareness on clean green lean on brands the manufacturers uh, the consumers the three pillars are definitely increasing and that is where so much of the framework on uh, or uh, higher or increasing be it if you uh, talk about uh, animal for impact on the animals or the food coloring which impacts the hazardous nature the parabens or the the grown in farms and uh, natural ingredients you non usage of pesticides how we can minimize in the industrial and machinery and uh, how how it is done ethical manner Uh, or any other use of uh, uh, genetically modified materials which definitely creates some kind of issues and all other aspects be it cruelty free chemicals free vegan products nitrate free all those are the impact the importance on uh, awareness of how we can actually be uh, sustainable or or continuously increasing so that is where brands are talking about 100 100% recycled fabrics and many brands be it h&m or walmart or ikea or anybody or most of the global brands including inditex they have declared in the next uh, next uh, coming decades in one to two decades 
they they have announced their products would be uh, 90 uh, somewhere between 80 to 95% uh, coming from recycled sources or can be recycled so that is the kind of uh, vision they have taken and they are adopting those measures whatever is possible and when brands declare that these are all uh, needed to support those sdgs definitely this entire supply chain needs to other uh, entire supply chain needs to be compliant on all those aspects so these are all the key high level aspects which uh, we are focusing on why or what is the importance of being compliant why what is the importance of being sustainable and uh, definitely if you link uh, all these factors into our recent learnings of the impact of covid which talk, we where we learned if we are it's not about money life is not about uh, fa- just a high uh, fam flamboyant lifestyle or whatever we learned about the basics again we learned how, how we can be more connected how we can be considerate compassionate to other people and uh, uh, and the uh, earth as a whole right so it's again we talk all about the basics of how we can uh, focus on Uh, the materials being not being abused the resources not being abused and how we can be more sustainable so this is the focus here and uh, as i said m- many companies are now focusing on uh, vegan not impacting the animals as well we never bothered about this we never bothered about having uh, a focus or a certification for apparel products but now that is also increasing so how we can achieve this sustainability it starts from the core it starts from planning and uh, most of you might have uh, learned or heard about design thinking where unless or wise we we uh, develop a product or a process or a system as a framework from the beginning we would not be able to achieve sustainability only by audits do you agree it is sustainability and compliance is not achieved through audits it, it is achieved through design of the system design of the frameworks and procedures processes right so unless always we focus uh, how we can plan our operations plan our businesses plan our people's uh, working methodology we are not going to be sustainable so uh, these are all the key key six elements of uh, how are we going to recycle beat and uh, and it is not new sustainability is not a new terminology recyclability is also not a new terminology we have been using these in in our life for several uh, many years except for that that we were not aware of the terminology but we have been recycling stuff we have been focusing on environment now there is a framework involved there is a process involved so that is where i personally uh, felt i can contribute uh, organizations who can uh, focus on this designing their sustainability models for their business it can be any organization it can be a manufacturer of textile or an apparel uh, it can be cotton based natural material or synthetics or it can be a brand it can be a store it can be a buying agency or it can be individuals where everywhere how we can design the stuff where that is that is the kind of essence i would be able to uh, bring personally and uh, design the systems and procedures sops uh, to towards a more sustainable use of uh, all the five ends like men material machine uh, methodology and uh, money so all we all needs to be sustainable and the focus is starting with the recyclability uh, how we can use uh, uh, reuse the materials and processes how we can focus how we can uh, ensure operational safety health and wellness ethical responsibility and social impact similarly functionality how we can increase the life of the product someone asked me oh you are focusing on synthetics so synthetics are harmful for uh, the environment and uh, some uh, many of us might not know it was uh, quite interesting for me when i learned when we talk about uh, the plastic covers the the polythene covers bags which we are talking about that is one of the major source of pollution landfills and which impacts or reduces the uh, uh, the the life of those uh, product where 
the 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 fetch bottles or polythene bags were designed to last longer it was designed to reuse so the cotton material reusability is slightly less whereas the polyester or polythene materials are higher but what we did we did not use it properly we did not know i can use a polythene bag for several uh, years whereas most of the materials became one time use so uh, we we ourselves invented Uh, something new invested more on uh, create uh, trying to get something whereas we ourselves uh, spoiled those usage reduced the usage and uh, again we started uh, suffering so that is where the right understanding on service life and durability how how well we can maintain it and uh, how we can uh, use the imp- improve the functional effectiveness those kind of things are extremely important and the manufacturing it starts with the uh, yes uh, transportation packaging storage how we can uh, have a sustainable model where for example when it comes to packaging uh, very recently i was discussing with a brand owner indian uh, brand owner is who goes into sportswear who never uses any polythene material definitely it is uh, a different view from him the materials are polyester but the packaging is fully cellulosic and uh, the beauty is the you remove the a, a small box a packing which in which that uh, sports wear comes into uh, in in a, in a box you remove the box dip it in water and put it in earth and you get a new plant so that is the kind of uh, design for sustainability i'm talking about it's not just uh, yeah yeah colorful slide so these are all some of the best case examples so hope uh, you are getting what i am trying to explain the a box where from uh, where you are getting an apparel where you can just dip it and put it in the land where the seeds are uh, are uh, inside those packing and tomorrow after the shirt is being worn or for several times still there will be a plant which become a tree and it will always be there so consciously or unconsciously even if i am going to throw it there could be rain tomorrow and it will grow into a plant so that is the kind of design uh, i am talking about that is the kind of focus on sustainability how we can focus on sustainability each and everything we are talking about wooden buttons we are talking about those materials uh, from completely from nature it's uh, it can be a combo of certain things should be designed for to last longer where sometimes if it cannot be law, uh, designed like that the processes can be in such a way it can be completely sustainable completely biodegradable and kind of stuff and the design for resource utilization and economy the energy efficiency power consumption material utilization and kind of stuff the focus on energy so as i said initially water energy and food these are all the key aspects and then design for environmental impact so how this whatever we are doing or uh, is impacting the environment uh, what kind of carbon footprint what kind of uh, uh, those energy uh, requirements how we can continuously reduce uh, the energy consumptions energy is not only electricity it's about water it's about steam and including the mechanical energies whatever we will be using by people or machines in whatever ways so it's a holistic approach it starts with the design sustainability or compliance starts with definitely design and this would save you millions and millions of be it the rupees or taka whatever we call it as uh, in a, in the longer run whereas initial design process might become costly but in the longer run it will be safe health healthy as well as sustainable and that is where we talk about two in key aspects that is operational sustainability and corporate sustainability so what is the difference so in terms of operational sustainability that is our day to day aspect uh, how we are going to address this in a uh, more uh, tactical or operational manner that what we can do and corporate sustainability focuses on, on uh, high level policy oriented approach where we will not be able to do much but when we ensure in operational speed when we ensure what yes these are all being done corporate sustainability tells these are certified yes these are all audited these are all verified by competent third party uh, professionals uh, qualified enough uh, to do the such audits and then yes we we say yes we are certified so certification and uh, and execution go both go hand in hand because sometimes i might know to do certain things 
but uh, including say as simple as driving but if i am not having a license there is always a question mark on my uh, ability right so this is a license uh, which ensures that yes a person is uh, uh, qualified enough and uh, assessed that uh, he or she will be able to do certain things the same goes to businesses and that is where these uh, certifications come into picture and that is the impact of certification if we don't have if our businesses doesn't have certification there is no authenticity that we, we we are capable to do this right so hope you would agree on this and this is the importance of certification why we need to go why the brands are pushing for it why for ourselves we need to go for these certifications right so that is where when we talk about operational sustainability we talk about products processes people systems facilities assets and environment when we talk about products yes all the products which we are using on a day to day with all the raw materials all the chemicals which we might be using in our processes and uh, all the machinery all all products involved fabrics trims uh, the auxiliaries chemicals for dyeing right from each and every stage similarly when we talk about processes process sustainability is for both for process i mean the product manufacturing the people as well as the facilities so all all three the processes involved in all three elements uh, how people are sustainable how they are not overworked we are talking about uh, all the elements of uh, key audit requirements something like bsca or uh, or or uh, tap on kind of thing where uh, say overtime or min minimum wages or non bonded labor and all those kind of stuff so the people the systems so what kind of uh, systems it's i am not talking only about the computers but overall operational systems and procedures the facilities where uh, the the manufacturing is being done the factories per se or the or the workplaces per se and various other assets it can be uh, the physical assets intellectual assets financials and everything involved and more importantly environment so how we are uh, how we are utilizing how we are treating the effluents in in all forms like uh, be it water uh, uh, water gas and solid dumping and all those kind of things so all these operational sustainability has various various tools and it is quite exhaustive this we could it, this could go uh, say probably for a week or so if we uh, go in depth and uh, so that's the reason i am touching on the most important thing in quality certification anyone can guess what's the most important aspect in corporate sustainability and when we use organizations uh, which are third party with or independent organizations the most important term or element here is trust so when a organization is certified when the organization is uh the uh, 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 declare themselves we are so that trust that trust comes from commitment so yes i am going to do this or i am already doing this so this particular commitment and trust is the most important thing and definitely unless otherwise the processes are assessed unless otherwise the the systems are oriented into the requirements we will not be able to tell so confidently that these uh, systems are in place and when we talk about uh, the elements of corporate sustainability uh, definitely compliance in the in terms of compliance uh, obviously social and in uh, this esg has has become and becoming a mandatory requirement in most of the organizations especially focusing on listed companies so environmental social and governance reporting is becoming a part of uh, annual reporting process which has been there but the requirements are quite kind of quite Uh, focused much now so we talk about uh, environmental social governance and obviously other safety aspects but this covers holistically financial compliance you might have heard about lot of financial risks involved uh, the issues many mishaps which might have happened and uh, the over risk management for the businesses for the people and for the the assets and facilities uh, so those aspects people and culture definitely there is no just uh, normal certification here but uh, is, without people nothing works so each and every business runs the, the core is people and the culture so when we talk about corporate sustainability how the people are contributing taking or understanding this yesterday i saw in uh, one of the social media platform 
an organization has conducted quiz on their uh, their own internal corporate policies and somebody got award so it's it's a good thing to note so how uh, many organizations are taking further steps to uh, see those policies are uh, ingrained uh, trickle down to the the last employee so these are many good practices quality and safety in fact uh, this should have come in the first the topmost because uh, unless service we this is the two aspects which governed the past two years of our life the quality and safety we we the we the usage of mask we the uh, social distancing we the vaccinations or what ecology quality and safety and i and definitely my most favorite topics i have been a quality professional for for several years uh, into six sigma and the tkms and all uh, the importance of this quality is being understood now and this will definitely gain a long way and uh, whoever would like to focus much uh, want to have more for the detailed discussions i am definitely open how we can really achieve say something like zero defect which has been a, uh, a dream uh, terminology for many companies which uh, definitely if one company can do one country can others also do and uh, that is where uh, industry 4.0 kind of tools comes into picture and communication and disclosures the right communication at the right time and what we are doing what we are not doing this it and space history and base is also there so i will just come highlight a professional already available will not be going in depth into that uh, each and every uh, topic here to a minimum and uh, uh, and we will do that that all speaking i think mr dr karthik is facing some problem with the internet uh, so allow us a moment uh, yes i think dr karthik is back uh, so just give us a moment and he should be back online with the sharing of the screen <clears throat> dr karthik are you with us you know the technology can do this to us uh, it happens to all of us so let's hold on for uh, just uh, uh, for a minor few more seconds interruptions so i was talking about the specific uh, dr karthik we are still and, uh, you, for you uh, and definitely courtesy to many industry frameworks which are already available so these are all not my own inventions Mm. Dr. Karthik, we are still not able to hear you properly. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, but uh, you are. Uh, I think he's just dropped. So, Sonil, I would just uh, like to have a minute of yours on this. Uh, while Dr. Karthik was talking about this, any views uh, on what he has been uh, talking? And you come from a very, uh, you know, the thought process with the industry. So, do tell us about it. Yeah. i totally agree with the, the all the points what uh, dr karthik has highlighted in this complete session as of now and uh, one very interesting fact is the fact that what he mentioned is that uh, 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 bangladesh the way they have uh, teamed up and they have uh, kind of built up the model around this complete area has been very actively working in this country for last many many years so the way the adoption has been in bangladesh it is very impeccable I think he's just back online. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm back. I'm back, uh, and I hope uh, technology would not let me down now. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. So, yeah, very very quick overview on uh, the, these uh, products. So the the framework already available and which can be utilized in terms of uh, assessing. The reason being, when we talk about this, as I said, I, I told about design for sustainability. But at the same time, if we don't 
measure what we want to improve, we will not be able to improve actually. Right? What you can't measure, you cannot manage. You cannot manage the sustainability unless there is where we are and kind of thing. So that is where assessing comes into picture. The assessments is again evaluation or auditing, whatever we call it as. Then define where we want to go, design the process, how we want to go, implement the procedures, measure are we there yet or continuous improvement is needed. Then analyze continuously what kind of learnings, what kind of best practices are helping us, what are not helping us. So communicate it clearly to the stakeholders and move on. So that is how it is. Uh, it works. And that is where uh, some of the pro products and process certifications, say talking about uh, GOTS, the Global Organic Textile Standards. The organic has become, and it's not has become, it's, it was there and we spoiled it and now we're trying to become organic again, right? Do you, do you agree? We were actually organic earlier. So, I mean, several at least a century back or something, our, our uh, elders, if you, if you look at, they were uh, following organic methodologies and we spoiled it, right? So that is where organic uh, textile standards are uh, playing a major importance in back in the consumer's mind. And uh, uh, this focuses on natural fibers, how the products are grown organically without usage of uh, chemicals, which impacts uh, either the land, water, and fluids, as well as the final consumers. It, for, it covers major aspects of uh, social, environmental, and chemicals, integrity of organic content during the production, and uh, the complete supply chain be, being uh, assessed on this. So GOTS is one important aspect for the natural fibers. And another one is organic standards. So can we be 100% organic? Maybe, yes, possible, but still, at least to begin with, I am I am getting queries uh, if, uh, if for fabric say, okay, I want organic, but I want 20% organic. I am for 40% organic kind of stuff. At least something is there, right? So, uh, so that is one aspect, how we can declare or define a percentage of organic content in a blended content. So already it is uh, partially inorganic or partially uh, irregular stuff versus uh, some portions, it can be 20% organic cotton, say 40% uh, regular cotton and 20% organic cotton or 80% organic cotton and uh, sorry, regular cotton and 20% organic cotton or 60, 40, whatever combo, or it can be polyester blend or synthetic, any other synthetic brands. Okay. So that percentage is being again, uh, complete uh, backward supply chain being audited and traced how this can be uh, assessed. And uh, at the same time, global recycling standards. So when we talk about uh, recycling standards, uh, it largely is, uh, it can be both natural and synthetic materials. So it's a, a voluntary standards, which is obviously designed by the brands, how much of recycled content they want to use. It can be many, uh, no, many sportswear brands, basically they have gone into sportswear, I can say, as well as home textiles. They are using recycled the pet bottles for making the garments and uh, uh, home home curtains, including uh, curtains or blankets and mats and all those kind of stuff. So there, hundred percent recycling is possible. Uh, Adidas has launched several a few years back a series called Prime, where they use uh, plastic waste recovered from ocean. So ocean waste is a uh, a completely separate talk, uh, topic and uh, Adidas, brands like Adidas and say Decathlon kind of companies, they, they have launched uh, a series of uh, the line of products uh, completely used by ocean waste recycled material or the general pet uh, recycled material. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I went to one home textiles uh, manufacturing company in uh, Ahmedabad and they are into uh, a high-end luxury product, but at the same time, completely with the recycled material. So uh, for for their blankets, pillow covers, cushion covers, they complete home textile products. So their minimum content of 20% of uh, recycled material is uh, uh, considered as uh, coming under GRS certification, but as much as possible is better. And similarly, uh, in terms of GRS, the re recycled claim centers at RCS 100. So how we can uh, focus on the uh, certification of recycled input. So can we use uh, recycled energy? It's not only about the material.
material so recycled energy recycled uh, accessories uh, where may, may many chemicals and auxiliaries are also being uh, recovered from the supply chain so can we focus on those kind of areas right so these are all some of the uh, areas definitely focusing on uh, sustainability and many measures like uh, vegan certifications or hig index and uh, uh, the sort of certifications are available and largely this starts with voluntary declaration yes i want to go into this direction and uh, this will help me uh, move forward there is nobody is forcing it because again this are all in one way it adds cost to the business uh, in in the time being but uh, when we look at the bigger picture long long term scenario this will be giving much more uh, beneficial and these manufacturers are definitely getting a higher pay back in terms of their unit uh, value realization for their products being sold yeah, regular cotton versus uh, organic cotton regular uh, synthetic or polyester versus recycled polyester is actually costly in the current scenario and the more and more we can scale it up definitely it will it will uh, be more affordable for people and definitely for the environment and uh, what are the processes involved almost everything it can be for ginning spinning weaving or knitting printing dyeing finishing all the treatment processes packing labeling and all, all other uh, sub part of supply chain like uh, uh, trading and storage manufacturing import exports we can ensure sustainable practices we can ensure recycled material like i, I was discussing with one of my a uh, friend based in australia he is focusing on packaging how all the materials we use for packaging be it cotton boxes or wooden pallets or the ropes or the the tapes whatever how it can be recycled like zero it's not only it's more like a focusing on zero waste to landfill concept and this zero waste to landfill is a very interesting uh, area or topic where i would like to uh, Uh, share some uh, knowledge what happened i was in a, a organization uh, where we did uh, uh, say did a zero waste to landfill audit for one of the leading manufacturer of automobiles in india and they declared they wanted to declare they are say 98% uh adhered to zero land waste to land zero means zero but obviously 98 is still better which is 2% uh, still goes to zero waste uh, or uh, to the land and when we did the audit when we did the audit what happened was yes the final documentation or the final certifications could prove it was 98% but what happened when we backtracked it there was certain portions of the material say batteries were handed over to a particular vendor and who said he is sending it to a recycling facility and if you take a material a product called as like automobile i say a car you get all kind of have get one or two components right in in auto including textile which are used for seat covers and panels and kind of insulation then you have metal aluminium glass plastic uh, i think we lost dr karthik again for a moment uh <clears throat> Dr. Kate, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, yes, we can. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Really sorry, there is a kind of unusual disturbance. No worries. Okay. Uh, Tech glitches. Uh, so, yes. apologies. So, when, yeah. yeah so uh, i was talking about that audit uh, scenario for the landfill uh, point of view and certification point of view when we backtrack each and every process be it uh, the the foams and textiles and glass the oils the metal components and uh, and the various kind of metals it can be uh, the steel and copper uh, aluminium and all those kind of stuff plus other materials be it plastics and glass and everything finally we could could trace only up to 66% so that senior management assumed 
it was uh, 98 based on the documentation received but when we go sec second vendor or the sub vendor the third vendor uh, they all are working based on certification and uh, people are down the line they could not trace back the, the original impact so that way uh, yes certifications are important to declare but uh, auditing and ensuring that these these are all happening is also extremely important right so don't rely only on certification and that is where i i say start with the design of the process so how this when we start how it will end like it's more like one of the uh, key topics uh, start the begin with the end in mind so how it will actually can be recycled or upcycled uh, it can be reused uh, is extremely important when we start the process itself okay so these are all the kind of uh, aspects and similarly when we talk about uh, each and every stage they can say that it happens in textile also in everything we can uh, discuss at length and uh, so due to pos paucity of the time i would like to move into so uh, move into other area which is focusing on social compliance but i think uh, this uh, key four elements uh, which are all really making a difference and there are measurable tools uh, now uh, there are technology which has come into picture like blockchain which are being used in terms of traceability so uh, as i said when the materials are traced uh, with the technology where it is being sourced be it organic or when we talk about recycle what exactly is happening uh, so all are uh, traced through technology there are process in place uh, so that uh, we get authentic information and that is that is a key element of esg so so this is about uh, the product and process and the benefits definitely huge uh, benefits are there the most important thing risk mitigation in terms of reputation as well as the financials so that is the most important aspect market You don't need to kind of do firefighting, which is one of the key components in, say, apparel industry. So people, people, they probably call we are firefighters, not garment industry executives. Right? Garment industry is known for firefighting. Uh, so we should actually come out of it. We need to keep uh, bring systems and the procedures in place so that we can do a lot more work, creative and uh, uh, innovative rather than. Uh, uh, putting out the problems right and, uh, and that is we are promoting creativity and innovation and how do we develop uh, different markets uh, sustainable market developments and new products new countries new geographies and uh, environmental protection which is extremely key ensure, ensure enhance assurance on desired results what we want to get can definitely comes up with how we are doing or designing the processes how do we optimize the energy and the people towards uh, common goal and that is where you see all the successful companies all the uh, sustainable long term players have one thing in common they have always focused on their people the the values being uh, transmitted across the country uh, across the organization who does each and every systems and procedures in a very uh, systematic manner that helps the overall sustainability of the business and when it comes to social compliance, just a very quick touch base. Uh, different markets, like you, you know, BSCI is one of the most common. So BSCI and the SEDEX, uh, which is being done by Smeta. So these two largely focuses. Uh, all these programs basically focuses on uh, around uh, fifth, around twenty key elements: be it people, be it uh, uh, the working hours, the local labor law requirements, the financials, and uh, ethical practices sourcing and everything so these are all for different markets like dsa sedex and all largely focused on europe and rap definitely for us uh, sa tosin it is common it uh, again largely again uh, in europe and ics specifically focus on french market so which are all the uh, basis uh, which are all the markets which are the client base which uh, organizations are focusing on and there are much more few, few more are there again uh, i would like to state that in terms of uh, how we want to progress we can go specifically which are your markets which are your clients definitely 
um, some companies will focus on few markets. Some companies will have a balanced approach. Okay, I have three uh, US clients and three US uh, Europe clients and uh, like that. So uh, the, those specific guidelines, uh, company oriented approach can also be provided and uh, how we can actually be compliant, how we can reach, how to uh, reach, reach that excellence in, in everything. As I said, it's, it starts with design for compliance also. It's not only for uh, not only for uh, sustainability and the compliance definitely is a major topic because without a compliance certification, uh, irrespective of uh, what is the factory. I have I, very recently, I saw one factory who had uh, a particular certification, but when I look at the pictures of the factory, it was really horrible. So I, I could not believe that th this particular factory is uh, certified. But uh, what is important is not only the meeting the checklist, but uh, in reality, are we really sustainable? Are we really compliant? Are we following all the practices? Those are all important. And uh, we will be able to guide on all these elements as well. And uh, electrical safety, you might uh, in the past decade, a lot of un untoward incidents has happened. Uh, uh, I don't want to name, but issues happened in terms of building collapse and fire fire safety issues, all starting largely starting with the electrical issues. So this is another one important aspect. So these are all key elements when we talk about uh, health and safety and compliance and sustainability. And uh, definitely this goes holistic. Uh, all these elements can be addressed with the industry 4.0 tools, right? From R&D, raw material sourcing, components, manufacturing, transportation. So the entire supply chain uh, can be improvised, can be other too, because now the, the rate of speed of change uh, in, in terms of uh, data or uh, with respect to the supply chain processes, all are uh, at the highest level of speed uh, so far. And uh, this is the lowest in slowest compared to the future. So we will be moving through much, much, much faster rate of change in terms of the frameworks. Definitely, we will need to adapt automations. We will need to adopt industry 4.0 tools, which is the fourth industrial revolution definitely uh, in each and every aspect, uh, right from uh, designing of the manufacturing processes, sourcing processes, designing of materials and everything. So we'll, we'll, we'll play a major role and uh, this will help us to be reaching that stage of excellence in everything we do. So with this, I would like to kind of uh, have certain discussions, Q and A's if anyone have, and uh, I would like to share my guru, uh, in terms of uh, one of the things which I, the, everybody might have seen uh, about the quote about the dream, but I would like to see this, which is very rare, commonly shared, not commonly available in the net. So thinking should become your capital asset, no matter whatever ups and downs you come across in life. Here, the point you, I would like to relate is the mindset change for manufacturers and uh, uh, manufacturers and anybody in the business that. Compliance is costly. Compliance is time consuming. It is not adding value. Rather than that, how each and every tool can be used to enhance value. What is the USP? What is the UVP? Uh, how we can utilize those tools? That will make a huge difference. So uh, that's the that's day and for discussions. Thank you very much. And really sorry for the technical glitches in between. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Karthik, for this uh, very insightful session, I must say. Uh, you have covered a vast array of things which are required. Uh, some of the things which at times we, we presume that it is going to be and it is not, and how things like detailed auditing and all that can help, it, it really opened quite a lot of eyes for me. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so, Sonil, I would like to come on to you for, uh, for a further discussion. And uh, some of the uh, questions I, I see that you keep receiving even on WhatsApp, uh, uh, these questions and all that. So what about, what, what is your take on this session? I would say it's been a fantastic session. The way Dr. Karthik has uh, articulated the entire, uh, you know, journey uh, from being non-compliant to being compliant and uh, how companies can adopt to it. Um, I have a few questions for Dr. Karthik. Uh, 
and particularly since you have done lot of business in uh, bangladesh particularly i wanted to re emphasize in the fact that you've been uh, doing it uh, for nearly about 18 uh, years now what i yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. around around yeah ne hello yeah so you had a little break in the bit in between yeah so i was saying ki now uh, when you compare uh, two countries particularly and i am particularly emphasizing the fact that when you look at two countries india and bangladesh uh, where do you see that there is a gap uh, in terms of the quality certifications or the compliance has been adopted between these two countries itself uh i said there is quite some disturbance here I, if you can repeat the question would be really great yeah so my question is uh, that uh, since you work very closely in two countries um where do you see the gap between the two countries in terms of the adoption of compliance and uh, if you could state uh, some common reasons why uh, people are failing to adopt to this compliance methods okay this is this is definitely one of the most important questions i do keep receiving uh, this important for us to address uh, the point here is um, it's one uh, if you say in, in in a school or college grading system it's always comparative analysis right so a relative performance so what happened in india was actually much better uh positioned or placed in terms of compliance in general and that is the reason it has grown in the past uh, several decades and bangladesh had certain issues uh, in terms of both building safety and environmental issues and all those kind of things but uh, with a, a very unfortunate incident losing lots of lives bangladesh had learned that lesson so losing thousands of lives in in the year 2014 bangladesh has geared up so much so much and uh, and again obviously brands jumped in both in terms of uh, the demands as well as the supporting hands also and uh, bangladesh uh, got into that phase of alliance and accord for uh, us and uh, european brands uh, all joining hands together and most of the companies or uh, factories now in bangladesh are uh, alliance or accord certified Uh, they have been you know, they have gone through so much of requirements earlier buildings were uh, used in uh, say shared buildings not custom made for apparel industry uh, so now things have changed so many companies have moved into a proper well designed well compliant uh, premises for apparel manufacturing textile manufacturing and uh, it, it came at a huge cost uh, not only those people but obviously financial people many companies uh, had shut down in that period of 2014 to 18 and 19 five years have been so difficult but they have uh, now surpassed those basic minimum requirements and they uh, they have almost reached excellence and in addition to that many of the companies are now lead certified and they are at the level of platinum and gold lead certified focusing on environment and uh, still yes if you see uh, in the past two years i could not travel much to bangladesh due to travel restrictions and there were obviously not business impact was there both in india and bangladesh but now bangladesh is getting that benefit than india because of those well good certified companies environmentally focused companies and believe me many of the companies many in the sense almost 70 to 80% of factories in bangladesh are booked for the entire year of 2022 there is no capacity now so that is the impact which is happening compared to india i am from india i try to i i also uh, is associated i am also associated in uh, sourcing and other kind of stuff uh, for uh, for sports wear products my own products uh, i am unable to get it produced in bangladesh due to no capacity so I, we need to go for new factories so we are investing and making new factories in bangladesh to expand capacity whereas in india there is definitely capacity are still available but we are unable to place orders due to all other different challenges with uh, process people 
uh, there's certain kind of uncertainties. So brands still prefer Bangladesh. So uh, it's time gear up in terms of not only compliance, sustainability, environmental factories, lead certification kind of programs, uh, joining hands together, how it can be leveraged, the synergies can be leveraged to uh, take up better orders. So both countries are in competitive scenario. At the same time, they can work together. And that is where synergies like uh, the Bangladesh is good in garments and India good in fabrics, yarns, uh, kind of things. So they can work together. Uh, as, a, as a supply chain partner. So it's it's a very good question. Thank you. Mr. Karthik, uh, if you were to see the fact that uh, there is a lot of room that has opened up uh, for fashion and textiles, yeah. room which was uh, primarily a forte of China in terms of innovation, in terms of quality, that room uh, with the sudden shift in uh, the policy and the environment in the last two years has mm. now suddenly been opened up to countries, especially in Indian subcontinent. That includes India, Bangladesh, China, um, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. So yeah. apart from this, uh, we also have Vietnam. So yeah. now if you were to, you know, uh, if you were to look at five years journey, uh, the mm. next five years that are going to be shaping up, Mm -hmm. How do you, what kind of uh, measures you propose to the people uh, in this subcontinent that they should start adopting, uh, whether it is from a low fact or from the last fact, how, what kind of measure they should start adopting uh, quickly? Okay, uh, this is again an uh, extensive kind of question, because uh, advising or uh, guiding uh, uh, on what they should do is not going to be easy. But at the same time, I would uh, like at least three piece, which is one product. So what is the difference? Why, uh, why uh, we are getting the benefit is China due to various reasons, either their own policy or international pressure and all those kind of things. China's spillover effect is largely coming to South Asia. Brands tried Southeast Asian countries, including Cambodia, are again coming back to South Asia. So what is the difference? If you are going to offer the same product what we were offering in India and Bangladesh for the past 30 decades, and if you are unable to offer what China offered, either at a low cost or competitive cost, I don't want to call it as low cost, a competitive cost or innovative product, a new material, new finish, new fashion or whatever it is, if we are unable to offer that USP, I was talking to one of my manufacturer friend. I there was an he was like both uh, happy and unhappy. Yes, happy. There could be possibility that we might get better business, but unhappy that uh, existing business I am unable to handle. So how I am going to handle additional business? He means not only he as a person, the entire region, uh, I'm talking about the manufacturer in Tirupur. So existing business, they are struggling how to handle. So one, unless otherwise we are able to offer that kind of value and innovation in the product. And that, that comes with the designing. And that is where I, I, I should appreciate so, so text, uh, to join with uh, John Hansfield to Tech and offering those designing solutions, right? That I can say ha is helping to design new products and offer new collections, new range with their own creativity uh, rather than uh, depending upon buyers take back and replicate what they are telling to do, right? So this is one thing which man focus on uh, product innovations, new, new product development. Second one is the process. Why they, they are able to focus or offer this is again the process by which we can uh, give uh, innovations and creativity. So how we can improve the process, mainly focusing on lead time. Many of the manufacturers in India are unable to commit lead time. We don't know. When, when can you supply this? Give me some time. Give me a few days. Right? So processes improvement is important. And again, people, how we can improve the efficiency. That comes with the training. That comes with the hand-holding and coaching. So how we can really... Uh, 
place we have we drive each and every day the the focus and follow ups are, are not there the team members don't deliver so that comes with engagement that comes with the ownership and responsibility accountability so these kind of values needs to be uh, inbuilt and uh, developed so these three piece at least in this uh, one minute or so uh, i would like to emphasize the products the process and people apart from this uh, uh, you know i i don't see there are many questions coming in from the people in the room so i am just putting on some questions to you uh, one uh, important question which is uh, okay. there as part of the quality is i think uh, uh, actually i got some messages many of them are in uh, sir listening cannot talk or something i don't know <laughs> at least four five people have messaged me we are in webinar but we cannot ask questions <laughs> Why not? Uh, right, but at least you uh, you will be the voice of the participants, so it's good. Yeah, I am. I am just trying to be the voice of the participants. Uh, <laughs> I encourage all the members. Uh, yes, I think I I think somebody did try to raise raising their hand also. So in case if you have questions, please take the opportunity of asking it directly from uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Karthik. He is a senior expert himself in this domain for almost twenty years now. Mr. Karthik, one uh, important question, which again from the industry point, I want to check is um, in terms of the cost implication and cost to an ROI benefit. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one area the moment we talk about compliance and the certification, the one thing that comes into the mind for a business uh, owner is the cost. Yeah. Now, if you were to take cost uh, as the major area, you know, and then the uh, the uh, the returns that we can uh, get. can you elaborate what is because you mentioned so many certifications and some of the certifications are of a very high price i think they range anything between yeah. 20 to uh, 10 to 30000 dollars so how do you compare and why should a person invest into these kind of uh, certifications this is a good question and uh, as i said i did not go into the numbers for today's session but at the same time i what i would like to simply say uh your cost of a seat belt and airbag versus cost of an accident right so these certifications are like seat belts and airbags or these certifications are like masks and hand sanitizers versus when we get affected then the costs are going to be huge as long as we are not affected as long as we are still on track still it is okay right there could be certain audit programs costing around 4 to 5000 uh, dollars as well i we have uh, i have gone through those aspects but these are all to keep uh, check and balance in 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 the eff effective and efficient uh, operation of the business and uh, yes this may some more uh, recurring cost every year re audits uh, needs to be there but the, what is the volume of the business they are handling and uh, uh, again last month one best example one of my friend who uh, is having a small factory not audited no certification he is applying to domestic market he got a query from a buyer from uh, australia and uh, he did not have certification so he could not get the order so he if he had spent that 2000 dollar for example definitely he would have got order and in the longer run it would have been much more benefit and i currently i don't have the kind of uh, say the order value what was the offer the uh, fob values and the volumes and all but it was good and actually he was regretting i did not have on it similarly another one factory last week example certified certification is there expired not renewed on time they did not get order so these kind of things uh, practically i have seen and uh, that is where bringing financials is bit difficult because each and every company size when we talk about audit cost is going to be same it obviously depends on the manpower uh, how many people are there but the benefits are going to be multiple it's not going to be just two times three times it can be 10 to 20 times or ROIs are going to be much 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 higher so depending upon case to case scenario what's the size of the business what kind of audit how it is actually helping i am willing to do certain case studies and go specifically on these aspects also now yes. we can discuss those those manufacturers who would be interested to really see i want to get audited i want to see the value of audit how it will help we can definitely work on it and i think my contact details are there which can be shared 
and uh, we can take offline discussions in, in detail and uh, I'm willing to help. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that complete journey. And uh, in the interest of the time, I would like to advise all the members uh, who are still in the room, uh, please share your questions. Or in case if you want to uh, reach out to Dr. Karthik, uh, please uh, share your contact details. Team Sotex will share with you the feedback form about the session as to what you felt about it, what is that you would like to know more about it. Uh, again, as I said, the cost being one of the main barriers, and uh, that's been one of the psychological reasons why people avoid, uh, you know, investing their time and energy into compliance areas. But I, as a manufacturer in my own journey, I have realized that uh, the moment you, uh, you know, take this cost, it is just an investment that once, uh, uh, you know, put in will give you uh, benefits in a long run. It is not something where you invest in a certificate, you get the order the next day. It does not uh, work like that. But it uh, having a certificate or having a compliance with your factory is just uh, uh, a well articulated uh, vaccination uh, certificate that you have. And once the vaccination certificate is there, your, uh, you, know, uh, you know, all we have gone through COVID, so we understand that the importance of the certificate. So once that certificate is there, we are able to take a lot of things. We are able to work around. We can move around uh, across the world with that one single certificate. So that gives you a passport to travel. Not that you're going to have it uh, travel next day after the certificate. So it is very well articulated. So um, thank you once again for sharing that uh, uh, wonderful information, Dr. Karthik. And uh, my pleasure. Before we just, uh, you know, take on, uh, if there are any questions, we can take it on. But if there are no questions, I would like to take an opportunity to just share a quick video of the event that we had in uh, uh, in Bangalore last weekend. I would love to see that, yes, thank you. Dragon, is it visible? Yes, yes, it is. Welcome everyone. Uh, today is the uh, Olympics concept. First of its time, I'm Never in the history of mankind we have had such global challenges that we are having the last two years. Um, the bright side of that is we have learned how to work differently, think differently. Don't let that momentum die. Even when the COVID is over, it will be. And cheaper. That's the good part of tech technology. You know, it, it gets cheaper as it gets along. So here there is a challenge, which is a big challenge for A, the supply chain and the manufacturing uh, industry. And B, there is an availability of fantastic technology, which can help you overcome the challenge instantly. I mean, you don't have to wait for a few So they will prefer 20% more or 15% more, but more wasted.
So we had an excellent session uh, the, uh, on uh, the last weekend uh, on Friday and Saturday in Bangalore. It's a beautiful location. Uh, so, uh, five mills participated, two tech companies participated, and uh, was visited by nearly 48 plus companies, including some of the heavyweights like Nike, Flipkart, Amazon, um, Reliance, uh, uh, senior leaders from the Reliance came in, uh, CNA, and uh, many more buyers and uh, exporters visited that uh, event. So we had a mark of uh, an excellent coverage over there. So overall, the idea and the theme of the entire event was how fabric to fashion journey is further being transferred using digital, trans uh, digital technologies. So there is a lot of transformation happening in the textile and the fashion industry. And that's what we were trying to bring out from this event. The upcoming event is on this uh, Saturday, which is on, um, on the 19th, in Holiday Inn Hotel in uh, Delhi, which is adjoining to Noida, which is at the Mayur Vihar. So um, we would love to have people from the room come and visit us. Um, it's open to all the garment uh, manufacturers, fashion manufacturers, mills, buyers. Come and uh, experience how the journey can transfer it. We also have a live session from Dr. Indy Karthik right in that session itself. Dr. Karthik is traveling to India uh, tomorrow from Bangladesh. He's landing in uh, Chennai followed by Delhi. So he's coming and attending this event specially and he's going to have a live demo uh, for uh, live conversations with him in that session and we are excited about it. Gagan. Thank you, you. Thank you, Mr. Sonal. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I really love the session. As I said, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Karthik, for this uh, session, wonderful session. And I certainly am looking forward to see you in person on Saturday and to hear you uh, speak again at the session at the Mill Meet. So thank you so much. A very enlightening session for me, as, as I can see that some of the people who have a message on the chat box, a very, very interesting session for them indeed. Uh, I'm also getting messages on our Facebook page because this event is live on Facebook, uh, our Facebook community as well. So there also we've received the messages and a couple of questions also have come in. Uh, Sonil, those questions can be sent to uh, Dr. Karthik uh, later, and then we can you know probably connect people uh, with Dr. Karthik there. So thank you so much, Dr. Karthik, for taking our time to think about it, to understand, uh, of course, you are a veteran in the industry. So to understand what some of the challenges, what our community faces, and to answering those, I certainly feel that uh, uh, many of those questions have been answered. Uh, and I would say uh, it's a kind of a light bulb for a lot of them that, you know what, something needs to be done and you just cannot rest just like that. Uh, and just thinking that I'm gonna get some good business uh, opportunities. You have to act towards it. You have to invest in it. Uh, and it's only when you show that intent uh, and investment that the business in the long term uh, comes back to you. Uh, in turn, you know, looking at the overall global goals on sustainability and still in line with that, which everybody wants to get aligned to. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you who have spent uh, so much of time on our session today. I hope you found value at the session. There is a link in the chat box which says, uh, give your review or a feedback, please click on it uh, so, you, so you can, uh, give us a review. Along with that, uh, if you want to connect with Dr. Karthik, uh, he has already shared his details. You can connect with us and we'll be happy to connect you to Dr. Karthik uh, in case you feel that he can help you in some way, right? Uh, with this, I would like to uh, call it a day on this particular session, but we never ever, as I said, far from another session. As we said, we, have, we are looking forward to our next session on this Saturday, which is a physical session, but Apart from that, next Wednesday, we are doing a buyer-seller meet with uh, Vietnam. So there will be buyers from Vietnam, the RMGs from Vietnam, and uh, a lot of supply chain from India who will be meeting them in a one-to-one -one sessions with, the, with these people, right? Uh, okay, there's a, there's a gentleman called Nitin Dugal who has requested to connect with Dr. Karthik. So uh, may, I, may I request Priya and our team to please take a note of this. Uh, Mr. Dugal wants to connect uh, with uh, Dr. Karthik. So we will definitely make sure uh, Mr. Dugal to help you connect. All right, with this, uh, thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you uh, very, very soon on our next session. Thank you all. Thank you, Sonil. And thank you, Dr. Karthik. Uh, for Thanks a lot, Dugan. Thanks a lot, Sonil. Bye-bye.
Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.